Hey everyone, Pastor Bill Wiggs here with the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois with a devotional for Monday, August 24th, 2020. Well, we've been working our way through the book of 1 John, and we have made it into chapter 5 now. Today we're going to be reading verses 5 through 12, and we're only going to be focusing on two of those verses, however. Today I am reading again from the English Standard Version. Hear now the word of the Lord. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood, and the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his Son. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar, because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. And this is the testimony that God gave us, eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. All right, well, looking at verse 5, it says, Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is really important because what it's dealing with here is the fact that we are powerless, truthfully, to live our lives free of the sin that so easily ensnares us. And in fact, we are always tempted to go down the wrong path. But if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, if we have believed on his name, if we believe that he is indeed the Son of God, then we can have the power to overcome the world. Because when we believe in him, his Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. He gives us the strength, the power to overcome the world because Jesus himself has overcome the world. And because he is an overcomer and he now dwells in us, we can be overcomers. Does that mean we'll never fail? Of course it doesn't. But it does mean that we will have the strength to stand up against temptation. We will overcome the sins of this world. We will overcome the principalities and powers that rule our world right now. Because we are believers in the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. As we move into verse 6, it's a little bit different. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. So let's think about this for a minute. We need to understand that any time it talks about being born of water, it can be talking about one of two things. It can either be talking about baptism, which is often the way that it is interpreted, or it could be talking about the water of the womb. It is talking not of baptism. So which is it here? The water of the womb or the water of baptism? Well, it might be a little bit of both and. Baptism is very important. There's no doubt about that. It is one of the sacraments of the church. It is an act by which God gives us grace. It is an act by which we proclaim our faith to the world. When we're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God has promised to touch us anew. And it is a wonderful proclamation of the faith. But when the Bible talks about being born by water and the Spirit, as it does when Jesus is talking about being born again, it is talking about by the womb, the water of the womb. Remember, when a woman gives birth to a baby, what happens first? Her water breaks. And so when it talks about being born of water in the passage where Jesus is talking about being born again by water and the Spirit, it is talking about the fact that we are first born of a woman, born of the water of the womb, and then we are born of Spirit. We are born anew, a new beginning, a new creation, born again by the Spirit of God as we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. 
But what about this one? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and the blood. So what we have here is a reference that could mean both, actually. Jesus was indeed born of the water of the womb. He was born of the Virgin Mary. That's so important to our faith. We must understand that Jesus was born of the womb. And a reference to the fact that Jesus went through the cross, the blood of the cross. Now there's also another element that could be here, and that does relate to baptism. There was a teaching with the Gnostics, they're a heretical group that I've told you about before, that believed that the body didn't really matter. It was only a physical thing. It didn't matter. In fact, they taught that Jesus of Nazareth was born of a woman, okay? But when he came to his baptism, he went down into the water, John baptized him, and as he came up out of the water, the Christ, the Spirit of Christ, however you want to say it, came upon Jesus of Nazareth, and he became the Christ. That is a false teaching. That is heresy. Jesus was, from the very moment of conception, both God and man. He was the Christ from that moment on. Now, was Jesus the Christ before his conception by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary? Yes. But Jesus of Nazareth was not because he did not yet exist. The Son was to be the Christ, the Savior of the world the second person of the Trinity. But at the conception of Mary by the Holy Spirit, then the Christ and the body of Jesus of Nazareth, now conceived in his mother's womb, became one, fully God, fully man. And the Christ was present in his fullness in the womb of Mary. When that little baby was born in a manger in Bethlehem, the Christ was fully present. When that young man went to the temple at the age of 12 and taught the teachers, well, the Christ was fully present. When that same young man went for water baptism by John, well, the Christ was already present. The Spirit coming down in the form of a dove was in order to proclaim that he was the Christ. Not so he would discover he was the Christ, not so he would become the Christ, but just a proclamation that he was indeed the one they'd been looking for, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And so when he went out into the desert, still fully God, fully man, all the way to the cross. And that same Jesus bled and died for us. He bled and died for us. And so Jesus was indeed fully God and fully man. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by the water and the blood. So this is here where it might appear that this reference to water has to do with baptism. Remember, as I've been saying, the Gnostics believed that the Christ, what made Jesus divine, came on him when he was baptized. And so John says, not just by water, that's not it, but also by the blood. And so we have perhaps the water of the womb, we have the water of baptism, we have the Spirit coming down in the form of a dove in order to proclaim that he is the Son of God, the Savior of the world, so that people would know this is the one you've been looking for, the Messiah. And God the Father was so pleased in Jesus. But the blood, the blood is twofold here. If you're not a living being, you do not have blood. <laughs> and so Jesus did bleed and die for our sins on the cross. The Gnostics believed that the Christ came at his baptism and left before the cross. Why? Because the body is of no consequence to them, only the spirit mattered. But that's not what the word says. Jesus did truly die. He truly had human blood in his veins. It truly was poured out on the cross of Calvary. He did go through the baptism of the cross for our sins. 
Now, when it comes to us, both the water and the blood are very important as well. Not only are we born of the water of the womb, we also are to be baptized in water as a sign of our faith in Jesus Christ. Thus, it is the understanding that we will be baptized in water and our sins will be washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and the Spirit of Christ will move into our hearts. And so when we look at this, what we come to an understanding of is this, that because Jesus came in human flesh, fully God and fully man, and because he died on the cross for us, thus shedding his blood, and because we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, he has washed our sins away, and he has given us his spirit so that we will be able to live a victorious Christian life. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope that you are living a victorious Christian life today. I hope that you are being blessed by His Spirit, that you are being renewed and encouraged, and that in all things you are glorifying God. Well, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the witness of your Son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world born of a virgin, but yet he was fully God and fully man. We thank you, Lord, that he did indeed die on the cross for our sins. And, Lord, that he rose again to new life, that we might have life eternally and abundantly. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would always encourage us by your Spirit to live more fully for you. And, Lord, we pray today for those who are sick as well. We ask that you'd bring your healing touch upon them. We ask, Lord, that you'd pour out your healing on the nations, and especially this nation. Lord, help us as we go throughout our daily lives to experience more fully your love and grace and so proclaim it to others. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, tomorrow we're going to be doing something a little bit different during our devotional time, and I hope that you are blessed by it. We are going to be doing this week and next week devotionals on 1 John, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, we are going to be doing prayer services. They are a, a prayer service that is designed to help you grow in your own prayer life. I hope that they're a blessing to you and that you will tune in to see that and not just watch it, but participate in that because these are times of worship. Gather your family around your screen and join in praying and worshiping the Lord together. I do believe that you'll be blessed, and you will bless the heart of God as you do that. Well, until tomorrow, my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you, and may he give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have a great rest of the day. God is faithful forever, God.